go. Um, so we check this uh, step light um, the illuminator here. It's properly mounted. It's not loose, cracked, broken. Screws are in place. Another turn signal here and um, four way. Again, not cracked or broken. There is a screw missing on this one, um, but it's still firmly mounted. Um, rear axle. Uh, we're going to check the rear axle in exactly the same way we did the front, working our way in from the inside to the outside. And again, if I pause for a second, I'm going to just stop. I'm listening for air leaks that could indicate a, a leak from the suspension, the airbag suspension, or again from the air brakes. I don't hear any leaks. Um, so I look in there, I can see portions of the frame, again confirming what I knew earlier on, the frame is straight, not bent, twisted, cracked. Um, I can, although it would be impossible for you to pick up in the camera I think, I can see brake lines coming down, um, brake lines coming down to the, uh, the brake chamber and the, um, they appear to be properly mounted and uh, not uh, rubbing or uh, cracked or broken. Um, the brake drums are difficult to see because we have a double wheel here, but they should be not cracked or broken, um, visibly on the outside with no unusual welds. The uh, brake shoes should have a quarter of an inch of meat on it, and um, the slack adjusters and the push rods, 90 degree angle between those two, and then I shouldn't be able to move them more than a quarter inch on, on those. Um, as we come to the suspension, airbag suspension, like I said, it's not leaking, I don't hear any leaks. Um, it should be properly mounted, all the bolts, um, mounting bolts should be in place, and the shock absorbers, again, properly mounted, um, in place, bolts in place, and um, those should not be leaking. Um, our tyres on the rear axle, uh, 2 30 seconds of tread. Um, we are allowed recaps on the rear axle, and you can see this is a recap. Um, and it's getting close to its 2.30 seconds. In fact, this would be a tyre I would probably consider, consider downing, not just because I see some separation and, and reduced tread, but also the condition of the sidewall is starting to get worn out. So um, I check both tyres. I go inside to the inside tyre and check them both for tread. The inside tyre feels better than the outside tyre. Checking that sidewall again. It does, like I say, appear to have been quite heavily worn. Um, this is the one I would expect. And also, I've got some dents and damage to the rim, um, but I don't see any separation between the rim and the tire, but uh, this wheel seems to have uh, made contact with a few kerbs. I don't see any unusual non-factory welds on that either. here to, to check our air pressures with. Again we want to use a tire gauge and get uh, air pressures of about 105-110 um, psi on a cold wheel. Um, my lug nuts, um, make sure they're not loose. I'm checking for shiny areas on these threads, I'm checking for shortened areas on threads. Rust trails, difficult to tell on this wheel but um, I would be looking for rust trails, elongated bolt holes. Um, or shortened threads and the hub itself I need to make sure the hub seal is in good condition uh, no leaks I would, would see pulling the fluids here make sure all my bolts are in place and nothing is loose here and that brings me then to the, the center of the wheel and we're about done there check my mud flap on that side make sure it's in place and it's not loose all the bolts holding it in place are where they should be, and it's uh, not too low. You'll notice I've chopped my wheels. Um, we'll talk about why I did that when we come to do our brake check, but this is make the vehicle safe for the CDL test, so I chopped the wheels there. As I come down, I'm checking any doors to make sure they're locked, they're not going to open up as we're driving down the road, looking for any structural damage. It could be a problem if you're hanging off, it could be dangerous. Um, I check the red reflector here, it's dirty but properly mounted and I see the pop riveted that on and I've got another reflector and 
clearance light or marker light up on the top corner, not cracked or broken, and the screws hold it in place. So the instructions were around and to the rear of the vehicle. So as we go around and to the rear, um, I did mention earlier on the drive shaft. The drive shaft that goes from the engine to the rear axle. It's a real short one on this, um, but we still need to connect the, check the connecting new joints to make sure there's nothing caught up in those. The drive shaft should be straight, not bent or twisted or cracked. <laughs> That brings me to the rear of the bus. And if we look up, I've got five red clearance lights on the bus. They all appear to be properly mounted. No so cracks or broken brakes. Uh, and uh, we also have reflective units on those lights too. As I come down, I've got in the middle two red brake lights. Lights are not cracked or broken, they're dirty obviously. The seals around them are intact. Me that's the same on the rear, and then I check my left turn signal and four way um, brake light and tail lights. Uh, again, checking the lenses to make sure they're not cracked or broken, obscured, or they can use a clean. The seals around them are intact. Um, the reflector unit here is not cracked or broken, properly mounted, as is my rear bumper. And again, double checking, no leaks underneath. In case I forgot to mention it earlier. That brings us to the end of the outside of the vehicle. 